Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to look at circuit components, so let's get started. Firstly, what do we mean by circuit components? Well, components are just the things that you find connected in a circuit. So it's all your devices that you find, i.e. the parts of the circuit. And the way you'll find circuit components drawn in a diagram is in a circuit diagram with a symbol. And it says that circuit diagrams and symbols are used to simplify the drawing of electrical circuits. And the reason we use circuit diagrams with commonly known symbols is that they are quick to sketch and are understood by scientists and engineers around the world. So it doesn't matter what country you're in or what language you speak, if you're trying to build a circuit with a set of instructions that shows a circuit diagram, then all scientists and engineers around the world stick to the same symbols for circuits. So that means they can all understand them. So what we're going to do now is look at a range of circuit components, their symbols and their functions, i.e. what they do. So the first one we'll look at is what you would commonly call a battery, but but this is not actually called a battery. So the thing with the positive and negative terminal, this is actually called a cell, and this is used to power a circuit. Next we have a battery, so the battery looks like this with two or more cells. So we can say that a battery is a collection of two or more cells. And notice how the two cells are joined in the middle by a dashed line, that's important to include when you're drawing a battery in a circuit diagram. Next we have a bulb, and the bulb is just a big circle with a cross in it and this converts electrical energy to light energy. Moving on, we have the switch. So the switch can either be drawn with these little circles with a line that goes up. This would show an open switch, and a closed switch would just be where that line is horizontally flat. But you might also see this switch without the little circles and just as a line that goes up and a line that can be moved down. And the switch quite simply allows a circuit to be turned on and off. Next, we have a resistor. So a resistor has this kind of rectangle shape, this box shape, and it opposes the flow of current. Next, the variable resistor is like a resistor, so it's like this rectangle box shape, but it's also got an arrow going diagonally through the rectangle. And the function of a variable resistor is that it allows the flow of current in a circuit to be changed by changing the resistor. Remember that word variable means to change, so it's a resistor that can have its resistance changed, which means that we can change the current in a circuit. Next, we have the ammeter. Remember the ammeter is a big circle with a capital A in it, and this is used to measure the current in a circuit. A voltmeter is a big circle with a capital V in it, which is used to measure the voltage across a circuit component. And the ohmmeter again is a big circle with the omega symbol, which is the unit of resistance. And this is used to measure the resistance of a circuit component. Now, before we look at some more circuit components, I just want to point out some of the terminology that I've been using to describe current, voltage, and resistance. So we always want to use the same words when we're talking about measuring these things. And so you'll notice when I talk about current, I say the current in a circuit or the current through a circuit. So remember the current is a flow of electrons or a flow of charges, so it flows in or through a circuit. When we talk about voltage though, we talk about the voltage across a circuit component. And lastly, when we talk about resistance, we say the resistance of a circuit component. So we say the current in or through, voltage across, and the resistance of something. Because remember, all circuit components will have a resistance. It's a property belonging to the component itself. Moving on then, we have the motor. And a motor is a big circle with a capital M in it. And a motor converts electrical energy to mechanical energy, usually in order to move something. So what we've looked at so far is some of the more simpler components that you'll find in circuits. But we're going to now look at more components which you might also find in your circuits. So the first one is a DC supply, direct current supply. And you'll notice the circuit circuit symbol is two little circles with a gap in between them and we've got a positive and a negative terminal there. And this is the same as drawing a cell. So remember we saw the cell as a positive terminal and a negative terminal with our lines. So you could see the DC supply drawn like this or you might see it drawn as a cell because remember a battery is an example of a DC supply. And a DC supply produces a constant voltage. Next we have an AC supply, so notice how this has two little circles, but it, we've got this little wave pattern in the middle. Now you might also see the AC supply with a big circle with the little wave pattern inside that circle, but it just means the same thing. Now an AC supply produces an alternating voltage, so alternating means changing, and that's because we've got an alternating current. So an alternating current gives rise to an alternating voltage. Next we have a diode, which is this sort of triangle shape with a big thick line at the end and this allows current to flow in one direction only. Next we have a capacitor which you'll see is two thicker lines separated by air and this stores charge and therefore electrical energy. Next we have a microphone which has a thick line, a circle and then two prongs on the end and a microphone converts sound energy to electrical energy. Next we have the loudspeaker and you'll notice again we have two prongs but we then have a sort of rectangle and a more loudspeaker type shape there. And the loudspeaker converts electrical energy to sound energy. 
A thermocouple has this symbol here, which looks a bit like a pencil with some lead on the end, and we've got a positive and negative part there. And this converts heat into electrical energy. Lastly, we have something called a solar or photovoltaic cell, and you would find lots of these in things like solar panels. And you'll notice the circuit symbol for this is a cell, so a positive and negative terminal, with two arrows pointing in towards the cell. And these arrows represent light coming into the cell. So this converts light into electrical energy. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.